Welcome to part four, 18th century classicism. In the classical era, order, reason, and serenity were used to express emotions in the different art forms. The classicists sought to emulate the qualities of order, stability, and harmonious proportion, which were found in the art and literature of ancient Greece and Rome. Aristocratic sovereigns continued to rule, enjoying power through inherited right. However, the social upheaval of the French Revolution shifted the power from the aristocracy to the middle class. The American Revolution broke out before the French Revolution. The triggers were injustices imposed on people by their sovereign kings. However, the main issue was that of human equality and freedom. The Industrial Revolution contributed to the wealth of the middle class. Inventions included the improved steam engine, spinning jenny, and cotton gin. Advances in science improved the human condition as well. Benjamin Franklin harnessed electricity, Joseph Priestley discovered oxygen, and Edward Jenner perfected vaccination. This era was called the Age of Reason due to the popularity of the social and political ideas of Voltaire and Rousseau. These philosophers were also advocates of the middle class, and the equality of all men was a main tenet of their philosophy. The elements of classical style reflect the Enlightenment ideas of order and clarity. Elegant lyrical melodies characterize the classical style. Even the instrumental melodies of this era are memorable and easy to sing. Classical melodies are often constructed in symmetrical four-bar phrases with clear cadences or resting points, and tend to move stepwise or by small leaps within a narrow range. The harmonies are diatonic, built from the seven tones of the major or minor scales. The melody is often set gracefully in a homophonic texture, a melody with an accompanied harmony. Rhythm also helps reinforce symmetry and balance, and typically meters are basic and steady. All of these elements are employed to create a form with well-defined sections. Overall, works tend to move from a home key to a contrasting key and then back. Although designed to cater to aristocratic elegance, the songs, symphonies, concerti, string quartets, and sonatas of the classical era exhibit the influence of the folk and popular elements present in the surrounding culture. The culture of the 18th century received its sustenance from the patronage or sponsorship of the aristocracy who viewed the arts as a necessary adornment of life. Social events created a steady demand for new works from composers. Musicians ranked little better than servants, but most found it to be a workable system that provided economic security and an environment in which they were also able to function as artists. Middle-class women found a place as musicians under the patronage system. They were prominent figures in operas and court ballets. Some were court instrumentalists and music teachers, offering private lessons to members of the nobility. There was a rise in the number of women pianists and violinists who made careers as solo performers. Later in the era, musical performances began to be held in public concert venues. The growing middle class audiences of this era were eager to hear new musical innovations and works that reflected a growing interest in greater equalitarianism. This inspired productivity in the composers. This is an 18th century map of the major musical centers in Europe. Every musical work has a form. Absolute music is music with no pictorial or literary association. In absolute music, form is essential because there is no prescribed story or text to hold the music together. A multi-movement cycle is a three or four movement structure found in various genres such as the classical symphony, sonata, string quartet, or concerto. Each movement of a cycle is in a prescribed form with a specific tempo and certain characteristics. In this seating plan for a standard classical period symphony orchestra, you'll notice that we've established the four instrumental families, string, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. The string section has expanded 
And while we still have the flutes, oboes, clarinets, and bassoons, we've added valve trumpets and French horns. The timpani is still the only percussion instrument in the orchestra. You'll notice there's a conductor now instead of a harpsichordist, and that can also be um, a pianist conductor or a conductor with a piano soloist. The Viennese school is a name given to a group of classical era composers, Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven. Their music characterizes the classical period in music, 1750 to 1825 with lyrical and appealing treatment of melodic and harmonic elements, as well as the development of highly structured instrumental forms. Classicism does not imply that these outstanding composers strictly adhered to the forms that were set in place during this era. They would often depart from them as they desired. With regard to harmonic material, they would often experiment with the possibilities of the major minor system to the fullest. The ideas of the Viennese school were continued in the work of Franz Schubert. Joseph Haydn was one of the most prolific composers of the classical era. He was influenced musically at an early age by the folk songs and dances of his hometown of Rouen, a small village in Austria. He had a beautiful voice as a child and became a singer for St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna until his voice changed at the age of 16. He settled in Vienna and earned a living teaching and accompanying. He eventually attracted the attention of the Viennese aristocracy and at the age of 29 entered the service of the Esterhazy family, a very wealthy family of Hungarian princes known for their patronage of the arts. He remained in their service for 30 years and had under his direction an orchestra, an opera company, a marionette theater, and a chapel. Upon the Esterhazy prince's death, he made two visits to London where he was very well received. He died in 1809 and was acknowledged through Europe as the premier musician of his time. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was born in Salzburg, the son of a renowned violin pedagogue named Leopold Mozart. Leopold also played violin in the court orchestra. He was a composer and he was Mozart's teacher. The young Mozart began composing at five years old, and by 13 he had written sonatas, concertos, symphonies, and operas. He toured and performed with his family throughout Europe and was presented as a child genius. As he toured, he was introduced to the greatest composers of the era. He and Haydn were friends, and Haydn may have been a mentor. As Mozart grew older, he rebelled against the social restrictions of the patronage system which resulted in his dismissal by his patron, the Archbishop of Salzburg. Mozart then began a career as a freelance musician at the age of 25. He produced his most successful operas with Lorenzo de Ponte, who was the librettist for The Marriage of Figaro and Don Giovanni. Vienna loved The Marriage of Figaro. The city of Prague loved Don Giovanni. It was written for the Prague Opera, but it was not well received in Vienna because Mozart's comic operas underscored class and gender inequality. Uh, these operas still resonate with audiences today. Mozart wrote more than 20 operas in different genres, opera buffa, which was Italian comic opera, opera seria, which is Italian serious opera, and singspiel, a lighter form of German opera that includes spoken dialogue. On this slide to the left, you'll see a painting of the Mozart family with Nannerl's, his sister, singing and Wolfgang playing either the harpsichord or the forte piano. His father's playing the violin. To the right is Mozart's actual forte piano that's in Salzburg, Austria. And you'll notice how the colors of the white and black keys are the reverse of today's pianos. Ludwig van Beethoven was born in Bonn in 1700. He was a German composer and pianist. He grew up in a musical family and his father was his teacher. Hoping his talented son was another Mozart, Beethoven's father was abusive and made him practice piano for long hours. As a declared child prodigy, he met and played for Mozart and Haydn in Vienna. At the age of 22, he moved to Vienna where he operated under a modified patronage system. 
He was not responsible to a specific patron, but was supported financially by many different patrons. His career was further aided by the emergence of the middle class public, which brought revenue through the growth of concerts and music publishing. Beethoven began to suffer a hearing loss in his late 20s that eventually led to total deafness. His infirmity brought a sense of isolation to the composer, and his personality became increasingly that of an eccentric genius. A ride in an open carriage during severe weather brought an attack of edema that was ultimately fatal, and he died at the age of 57, famous and revered. His compositional output can be divided into three periods. The early period reflects the inherited tradition of Haydn and Mozart. The middle period featured strong dynamic contrasts, explosive, ac explosive accents, and longer movements that are transitional into the Romantic period. And the late period was marked by chromatic harmonies and experimentation that sound almost like they're from the 20th century. In this engraving from the German school in the early 19th century, you see a picture of young Beethoven performing for an older Mozart. Composers often respond to political climates, and Beethoven was no exception. He was a supporter of democracy and the revolutions that were occurring. He supported Napoleon at first until he declared himself emperor and then he rejected him. Beethoven's Ode to Joy finale celebrates the human spirit, and he believed in working collectively towards a common purpose. This is an example of an 18th century Viennese theater where one might have heard Beethoven's fifth or sixth symphonies. Musical ideas may be considered in terms of thought. Each thought flows logically to the next in a steady progression until it reaches a conclusion. Themes are the musical thoughts or ideas used as building blocks in the construction of a composition. Here is notation of the first part of the melody from Mozart's Eine Kleine Nacht music, first movement. And then below that are, is an example of a motive. This is Beethoven's short, 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 long pattern that he uses as, as a building block in his Symphony No. 5. An ostinato is a short, repeated musical pattern, usually in the bass voice. The term is derived from an Italian word that means obstinate or stubborn, and that's because ostinatos repeat throughout classical works. An ostinato is often an organizing feature of a work. One example of its use is in Pachelbel's Canon in D, which features beautiful melodic lines in an imitated polyphonic setting over a consistently repeating series of notes in the bass. The multi-movement cycle of the classical era was the form employed for many of the most important musical works, including symphonies, sonatas, string quartets, concertos, and other types of chamber music. This outline sums up the most common forms in the cycle. So the first movement would be long and dramatic, um, and the tempo would be allegro. The form would be sonata allegro, and it would be in the tonic key. The second movement is slow and lyrical, and the tempo would be andante or adagio. The form would be theme and variations, most likely, or ABA, or it could be a modified sonata allegro. That would be in a related key. Then the third movement is dance-like. The tempos would be allegro or allegretto. It would most likely be a minuet and trio in the 18th century and a scherzo and trio in the 19th century, and that would be in the tonic key. And then the fourth and last movement is lively and spirited. The tempo would be allegro or vivace, and it would most likely be a rondo, or it could be a sonata rondo or a sonata allegro in the tonic key. In this chart, you'll notice that symphonies and string quartets are usually four movement works with the relationship of the movements as noted. A sonata or concerto is usually a three movement work with the movements fast, slow, fast. In addition, you'll notice that concertos also have a cadenza. In a multi-movement cycle, the first movement is a sonata allegro form. This is an A, B, A prime pattern. The A section is the exposition. This is repeated. Then there's a B section that contrasts with that called the development. And then the A prime is the recapitulation where it repeats the A section but with a little bit of a 
change at the end and also differences in keys. So if we look at the exposition, you'll see that the main themes are presented as well as the key conflict and it proceeds as follows. The first theme establishes the home or tonic key and this is followed by a bridge which modulates and leads to the presentation of the second theme. The second theme is in a contrasting key and this is followed by a concluding section that confirms the contrasting key and rounds off the exposition. The entire exposition is then usually repeated before proceeding to the development. The second section in a sonata allegra form is the development, which is filled with conflict and action. The development wanders through many foreign keys, which build tension, and the main themes are varied, expanded, contracted, broken apart, and recombined in new ways. Towards the end of the development, there is a retransition that leads into the next section, which is called the recapitulation. The recapitulation is the psychological climax of the Sonata Allegro scheme. It begins with a double return of the home key and the first theme, and this provides a sense of unity and relief after the events of the development. The bridge also returns, this time without modulating, and leads to the second theme, which is now presented in the tonic key. And this is followed by a closing section, concluding the piece with a cadence in the home key. The second movement of a multi-movement cycle is the theme and variations. And it's basically, as the name entails, a theme that's varied. So the first theme is presented and then each of the variations afterwards. The variations can be in key. The melody can be varied slightly. They can have different harmony, different rhythm, different meters, textures, dynamics, or timbres. The third movement in the classical multi-movement cycle is the minuet and trio. This is an ABA form. The A is a minuet and the B is a contrasting trio played by three instruments. It starts out with the minuet and the minuet has an A and B section that are repeated. Then goes to the contrasting section, the C and D, which would be different music, and those are both repeated. And then the A minuet comes back, and this time the A-B sections are not repeated. Minuets were actually based on minuet dances, and this would be an 18th century court dance. The fourth movement of a multi-movement cycle is the rondo, and the rondo form is fairly simple. It's an A-B-A-B-A -A -B -A form with the A and then a B contrast. Or it can be an ABACA with new uh, material in the C section, or it can be an ABACABA -A -A section. And each of those sections or parts are repeated. The most prominent ensemble in chamber music was the string quartet, consisting of two violins, a viola, and a cello. There were several different types of chamber ensembles, duos, trios, string quartets, and quintets. Composers, though, would also write chamber music for larger groups, such as sextets, septets, and octets, or in other popular genres intended for entertainment, such as serenades or divertimento. A serenade is a classical instrumental genre that combines elements of chamber music and symphony, often performed in the evening or at social functions. A divertimento is a classical instrumental genre for chamber ensemble or soloist, often performed as light entertainment. Mozart's works were cataloged chronologically by Ludwig von Kuchel. The work was listed with a K followed by a number and then the movement. The chronology of Mozart's music is being revised continuously. The structure of a string quartet is as follows. The first movement is usually fast in sonata allegro form. The second movement is slow in ABA or theme and variations form. The third movement is often a dance-related movement, such as a minuet and trio at a moderate tempo. And the work concludes with a fourth movement at a fast tempo in sonata allegro or rondo form. 
The symphony was a principal instrumental form of the classical era. Its roots are in the Italian opera overture that was an orchestral piece in three-part form, fast, slow, fast. Eventually these parts became separate movements to which different effects were added. Rocket themes, which are characterized by a quick rise from the low to high register, and steamroller effects, which are long, drawn-out crescendos, became standard in the classical symphony. These effects are attributed mostly to composers who were active in Mannheim, a German city along the Rhine River. This group of composers, known as the Mannheim School, also added a minuet and trio movement, making the symphony a four-movement form that paralleled the form of the string quartet. In the classical era, most concertos were written for solo instrument and orchestra. The three movements of a classical concerto follow the fast, slow, fast pattern established in the Baroque era. A unique feature of a solo concerto is the cadenza, which is a brilliant solo passage in the manner of improvisation that interrupts the movement towards the end. The orchestra is silent as the soloist launches into a display of virtuosity, often centered around one or more themes of the movements, thus creating a very dramatic effect. Sonatas were designed for intimate personal expression and as such are instrumental works for one or two instruments, usually the piano or a duo like a violin and piano. Sonatas were sometimes designed for amateur performance in the home, but they were also used by composer performers as show pieces. They follow the multi-movement cycle, and they're usually three or four movements. The solo sonatas of Mozart, especially Ludwig von Beethoven, are among the most significant in the keyboard literature. The Moonlight Sonata is perhaps Beethoven's best-known piano work, and it evokes the new romantic style that he was heading towards in its expressive manipulation of classical conventions. Beethoven and Mozart both performed their sonatas in concert, and Beethoven's 32 piano sonatas span his entire career. Franz Schubert was born in Vienna and spent most of his short life there. He was an Austrian composer, pianist, violist, and he also sang and played the guitar. His father was a school teacher, and when he noticed his son had musical talent, he had him attend the Stenkundwig, which is the Imperial Seminary through a choral scholarship. Schubert's circle of friends included Austrian artists, writers, and fellow musicians who organized a series of salon concerts called Schubertiads, which featured the young composer's newest works. And Schubert actually achieved public recognition for his song Earl König while he was still a teenager. He had difficulty finding music jobs, so he often lived with his friends and patrons. He wrote over a thousand works in all genres in his short career, and he died sadly at the age of 31. Upon his request, he was buried near Beethoven. Schubert's symphonies of chamber music are classical in nature and form, but his songs exhibit wholly romantic traits, and he is considered a transitional composer. He built his career almost entirely on intimate musical performances in people's homes, and his songs, or German leader, exhibit subtle interactions between vocal part and accompaniment. There are two main song structures prevailing in the 19th century, and one was the strophic form in which the same music is repeated for each stanza of the text, and the other form is called through composed, which features no repetitions of whole sections, and the music changes according to the text. There was also a middle ground form called modified strophic, which combined the two. The same melody may be repeated for a few stanzas, but new material is introduced when the poem requires it. These songs had a common theme, nature, young love, and death. They followed a poem form, and they were also small form, which means they were one to three minutes in duration. They were collected into uh, thematic collections called song cycles, which would actually be like um, concept albums in the 20th century. Hubert's friends were artists and were very loyal to one another. They 
were his biggest fans and called themselves the Chevertians. And this is a painting by one of his friends showing a very packed carriage on an outing. This is a painting of the small theater in Vienna where Mozart's opera The Marriage of Figaro was first performed. Early 18th century opera reflected the hierarchies of society. Opera seria or serious opera was the norm. It was highly formalized and virtuosic, with librettos about kings and heroes. Later 18th century opera, however, moved to a simpler, more accessible style that reflected human emotion more realistically. The primary vehicle for this was comic opera. Comic opera could be found across Europe. Ballad opera in England, Singspiel in Germany, opera comique in France, and opera buffa in Italy. This new type of opera was supported by the rising merchant class. Comic opera was often in the vernacular, but Italian opera buffa was popular throughout Europe. This type of opera featured lively down-to-earth plots, ensemble numbers, farce, humor, and popular tunes.